District Governor-elect Tammy Mosteller. Um, I'm so glad to see everybody here today, and I know that uh, our speaker is going to do a great job. Let me just say before we get started that um, Sean Gibson, your upcoming DGE in July 1, is going to be having his spring assembly at the district conference in April of 2023. So that would that uh, make your club aware that the officers are gonna need to attend the district conference. And the dates for that are April 21st through the 23rd of 2023. And we're gonna be at the Marriott in Columbia, South Carolina. So to keep things rolling, I wanna introduce our speaker this morning. This is Gary Deals. Gary is a native of Franklin, North Carolina and resides in Otto, North Carolina with Nancy Lee, his wife, a native of Lincolnton. Yay. Both are active in the community, serving on various community boards and councils in Franklin and Macon County. The couple has three adult children, seven grandchildren, and one great grandson scattered along the East Coast. Uh, Mr. Deals retired as a colonel in the United States Air Force with almost 30 years of active duty. He served in various senior command and staff positions at the Pentagon, European Command, Pacific Air Forces, and various installations around the world. He is, <clears throat> excuse me, he commanded the 377th Air Base Wing at Kirkland Air Force Base, the 436th Support Group at Dover Air Force Base, <clears throat> and Air Forces for Operation. Air Forces Forward for Operation Uphold Democracy in Haiti. He's the recipient of numerous awards and decorations, including the Defense Superior Service Medal, the Legion of Merit with two Oak Leaf Clusters, the Meritorious Service Medal with four Oak Leaf, cl Oak Leaf Clusters. He is a master navigator with over 3,000 flying hours in various aircraft. And he began his rotary journey in 2006 and has served as club president past district governor of our district, district finance chair, district foundation chair, district foundation fundraising committee, and district chair of Operation Renewal, which assisted homeless veterans and their families. He was also the principal lead in establishing the Rotary Club of Clay County. He is one of the founders and active members of the Read to Me Literacy Project in Macon County and an active partner of the Dolly Parton Imagination Library for Macon County serving children from birth to age five. He has served in many years on the Macon County Board of Elections. And Gary holds a bachelor's of science degree in chemistry from Western Carolina University, a master of science degree in human relations from Webster University, and a master of arts degree in strategic studies from the Naval War College. Oh, that's a mouthful, Gary. And I'm so- good. That's all I got, that's all I got. <laughs> and so now I'm gonna turn it over to past district governor, Gary Deals. That's way too much. It sounds like something I must have written. Uh, yeah. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, presidents, president-elects, foundation chairs, uh, expectations for you guys from the governors, from RI, are going to be always, they always fall in three areas. Membership, you got to have members to do anything. Service, which is why we exist. And fundraising. Uh, which is what I'm going to talk about today, or part of what I'm going to talk about today. Connie, you're going to do my slides for me? So if you'll go to the whatever the next slide is, after the intro slide, if you have questions, uh, just type them in that little screen down there. We'll answer them at the end. Or if you really can't wait, uh, go ahead to the next one, uh, inter interject, and we'll respond. That to me. Okay, this is what I'm going to talk about. Fundraising. Uh, you can't do service without money. Okay, Gary right. has frozen again. Hopefully that he's got some weather in the area. Are you back, Gary? I didn't Good. leave. Are okay. you guys there? Yeah, it just froze for a minute. So we'll uh, keep going. Okay. It says I'm unstable, but that's not abnormal okay if i freeze just just mention it okay so that's what we're going to talk about go to the next slide please there you go uh arch comp set the stage for the foundation in 1929 actually of all of rotary we shouldn't live just for ourselves uh, but for the joy in doing good for us the foundation has had that theme since the beginning in 1917 do good 
uh, in the world. Go next. Like I say, we're established in 1917. Uh, the mission is to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace. And we do that using your monies, your funds. Uh, and we convert those into service projects. And if you've ever done a project anywhere outside your community, even in your community, you know you can change lives. We indeed do do good in the world. Go ahead. I know this is kind of a, a little bit boring when you talk about uh, the categories, but if you're doing a grant, these become very important because your grant, uh, your, your project has to fit in at least one of these categories. And they're pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna read them to you. Um, one of the ones we've done a lot in this district is water and sanitation. We've also done a lot of basic education and literacy. Uh, we've done some environment, one I think environmental one, and uh, several disease prevention, particularly the Highlands uh, Mountaintop Club have done those. So when you, if you're thinking of doing a grant, which we want you to do, we want it to be, it has to be in one of these areas. Okay, go ahead. Our charity is the Rotary Foundation. And it is a top-notch charity. Always gets the highest rating from Charity uh, Navigator. Uh, but why? Because we use the money that you give us to use, all except 5%, which pays for our overhead. I'll talk a little bit about that here in a few moments. We have a global network of people working to do things. Right now, my club has got some people down in, uh, where are they, uh, Guatemala, uh, looking at a project down there, trying to get ready to do another water project, this time up in the mountains of Guatemala. Everything we do through the foundation is Rotarian driven. We do local, we do international activities, and we watch where the money goes. That's what John DeWitt was talking about a little bit, uh, uh, referring to a little bit earlier. The monies have to be spent for what it's approved to be spent for. And like, as I said, we have a consistently high ranking by the navigator, okay? Fundraising, all these monies come from us. Actually, you can solicit from outside, but most of them do come from us. The most common uh, source, is our annual fund giving, which uh, Ron Winecoff's a pro at, by the way. We've had, um, even during this pandemic stuff, we've had, we've done well. We've met our goals or exceeded our goals. I think we're 130% over goal uh, so far this year. Pardon me. Uh, that, what that tells me is our goals are too low. Because I go back to 1617 and uh, the year after that, 1718, and our goals were in the neighborhood of $385,000. Uh, recently, they've been in the neighborhood of 285,000, and we've got about the same number of people. So uh, I encourage all the governors, all the assistant governors, all presidents to look at what your club can do and maybe should do and stretch it. It's a goal. If you don't meet it, Okay, that's fine, but make it a little, make it tough. Don't make it easy. Don't set the bar too low. There are other method, methods for us getting money, and uh, DG Ken's uh, million dollar dinner really highlighted all of these other ones here. In fact, I think just about all of those areas were used for people to give uh, major gifts of $10,000 or more. Some people just outright gave money. A lot of people pledge stock, or several people pledge stock. Uh, several rollovers out of IRAs. If you're 70 and a half, that's a great way to cut, save some money on your tax. Annuities, I did, I did one of those myself. Uh, and, and on and on. Bequest and befit beneficiary designations are very common in, uh, in the clubs. Put, in other words, putting a bequest in your will for whatever amount you want to. $1,000, $10,000, $200,000. Uh, we have several in our club, as Mike North knows. Okay, next. DG expectations. Both, I now talk about CART, although it's not part of the foundation. I generally talk about it a little bit. Uh, each Rotarian should uh, contribute at least $125 to the annual fund. And if you think about that, that's not a heck of a lot. And, you know, what are you talking, $11 a month or something? Uh, something in that neighborhood, 12 maybe. 
No, that's 144. So, you know, you're talking next to nothing. If you use rotary direct, it's even easier. Contribute at least $45 to polio plus. That's been consistently uh, the amount we've used for the last five or six years. And at least $40 to CART. And that's the same uh, goal we've used for several years. Increase the number of Paul Harris fellows. <coughs> Pardon. There's all kinds of ways to do that, of course. You can do that through outright contributions. You can use a combination of points and money. Your foundation chair and your club president, your assistant governor, and me and my team, we can help you do that. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. We'd like to see more Rotary Direct participants. Right now, we've got a little less than 300 uh, people in the district uh, that are Rotary Direct. Now, that's not real good. You're talking, it's 286, I believe it is. So you're talking 15%, roughly. Uh, but you know what? That's the highest in the region, in the zone, and which is really kind of surprising. Uh, this, if you do Rotary Direct, I, I think I've got a slide on a little bit uh, later, you never will miss 10 bucks a month. There is no maximum. Uh, a lot of people do the Paul Air Society like that. It's $89 uh, a month to do $1,000 a year. It's easier on the foundation chair. It's easier on the contributor. And it's certainly easier on myself and the fundraising team. We'd like to have 100% of every Rotarian every year. And for the life of me, I've talked about this for a decade uh, or more. Uh, I do not understand why every Rotarian doesn't feel it's a, their obligation to contribute to the foundation. I mean, that's how we do good around the world. That's how we get our monies back to do scholars. That's how we do district grants. That's how we do global grants. It, it is a, when, when I do the uh, orient, new member orientation, I tell them flat out, this ought to be a requirement for you in your own mind to make this contribution. We're not asking you to give $10,000 a year. We're asking for a, a minuscule amount. So please, as you talk to your club members, make the point of the importance, not so much of, of the money, but what the money does, the grants, uh, the, the good it does around the world, the water that it puts in a, in a child's hand that has never seen a clean glass of water, for example. You can have, there are all kinds of good examples. Okay, next slide. Also, set fundraising goals. You know, I talked about this a little bit earlier. When you do your goals in Rotary Club Central, set those goals as high as you're comfortable setting them. Um, when you do your new member orientation, if you're not doing one, you need to be. Uh, engage those new members. Show them what their monies are doing. Uh, give them examples. And put a Rotary Direct form in front of them. My foundation chair in my club, Mike Norris, does this at our orientation. Every time you give them that form, and if they don't want to do the formula, we'll help them do it online. Make that first step. You can also just hold a fundraiser for one of these areas of focus. Um, you know, something that's near and dear to your heart. Uh, at a county fair, at some special event, at a, an event downtown when they do all these festivals. You can do a little fundraiser for one of these. <clears throat> Many years ago, I did one for Polio Plus. We didn't get a lot of money. But we sure got, we got four or 500 bucks, but we got a, a lot of attention, particularly from young people who had no idea that polio still existed in this world. And lead by example, make a gift yourself every year. And as uh, Ron Weinkoff has always told me, if somebody gives us money, we need to recognize those people publicly uh, and pat them on the back and thank them for doing that. And we have all kinds of ways of doing it. Okay, let's go to the next one. Or I'll get behind and we'll never get done. Next slide. Oh, that's it. Never mind. Talk about Rotary Direct. Uh, real simple. You, not, you can go online at rotary.org, donate, and set that up. There is also a form 
that you can fill out and mail in or uh, uh, PDF it and email it in. You can give a simple thing is give a check to your club foundation chair. A lot of people like, prefer doing it that way. Or you can mail your gift directly to the foundation using the contribution form. If you do that, if you do Okay. Has he frozen for everyone else? Oh. Yes. Gary? Okay. You, okay. You froze for a froze minute. Froze for right. a second. Yeah. Okay. Next got one. It. I got gotcha. you. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. Go. Okay. There is the top of the rotary direct form that I talked about. If you don't have it, can't find it, email me. I'll send a copy of it to you. Okay. Go to the next one. These are just reminders here. Next slide. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, polio. Hmm, the title is missing from this thing. Wonder why. Uh, this is a disease that there is no cure for. Once you get it, you got it. And so far this year, we have only two cases worldwide. One in Pakistan, one in Afghanistan. Uh, there's like 56 cases of the uh, uh, vaccine-derived uh, uh, polio uh, all around the world. But we're making a big dent in this. Uh, but it's still out there. And you see pictures of these kids like this, and it'll just break your heart. As a young person, I had one of my neighbors had polio and died from it as a teenager. He was in an iron lung for, I don't know, several years. Uh, but he died when I was in high school. Sometimes. So go to the next one. <clears throat> We've been beating this dog for several years. Um, 1979, with the March of Dimes thing started. Uh, Governor Gary, I hate to inter inter interrupt you. Can somebody make sure, everybody make sure that they are muted because I'm hearing a lot of background noise. Thank you. A couple of things that are important on this slide is we, it's not us alone. Uh, we're partnered with the UN, the CDC and the Gates Foundation. The Gates Foundation is very important. For every dollar we give, they match it with two. So you're talking three three dollars for one dollar when you, when you contribute. That makes a big, big difference. I asked John Germ back in, um, I guess it was September or November, right before Christmas, how much longer, he's the uh, foundation chair, uh, Rotary Foundation chair. Uh, whoa, whoa. I asked him how long he thought we would have to keep working on this to get rid of polio. And he said, at least five more years uh, because you gotta have three years without any cases and you still gotta keep giving all these vaccines around the world. Yeah, so we're, we're in this for the long haul but we do not want to give up on it this close to the end. You've made a difference and you will continue to make a difference with your funds. All right. Now I want to kind of go to some of the reports that you can use to uh, see how you're doing in your club. Um, there's the name of them. Uh, the, for the club president, the club fundraising analysis is the best one, I think, because you've got a macro picture of everything, your annual fund giving, your polio plus giving, um, how, many, how many people have given, et cetera. You go into your club recognition center, summary in the club foundation banner report, and you get down to the individual level. So you can talk to people. Uh, when you talk to people, you'll know what you're talking about. Uh, the Paul Harris fellow on benefactor report is good. We'd like to see all of our 100% Paul Harris clubs continue to be Paul Harris 100%. And uh, this report would help you identify those who aren't. It's also, you can also find that on the uh, recognition summary report. Okay, next. The club fundraising analysis, as I was talking about earlier. I just used this because I was up there a couple of weeks ago talking about this. And uh, you can see they set their goals. They met their goals. That's what the chart does for you shows our contributions for 21-22 uh, so far, and it gives their per capita breakout. 
really uh, proud of this club. <coughs> Pardon me. Last year, uh, yeah, you find those reports on rotary.org. I'm sorry. Good question, uh, Jim. Uh, I didn't say that. Thank you. It's on my rotary where all these reports are. Um, these guys had a per capita of over $1,000 last year. $1,000, $1,009.68, I believe it was. That's the highest per capita of any club we've ever had in this district. And uh, yeah, it's, it's re really kind of special. Okay, go to the next one. But that's a great one to use. Grants, I'm by far the um, not the expert on, on grants. And this is not ex uh, intended to be a complete overview. You go to the grant management seminar, and you listen to John Davison, John DeWitt, and all the other people on that team, and they can get you down in, uh, uh, in the weeds on this and help you with it. But we're going to talk a little bit about each of these. Okay, go to the next one. When you give the money, your money, to the annual fund, in three years, uh, half of that money comes back to the district in the form of district designated funds. It's actually 47.5%. 47.5% goes to the World Fund, 47. Um, that ends up being, and I meant to have that chart in front of me, but in the neighborhood of a, we had 92,000 and some dollars we allocated to district grants last year. As of right now, we've got $89,000 of our DDF not allocated, uh, although we funded uh, three or four global grants. So this money comes back and we use this money. In fact, we're making a concerted effort to use all of it. Each year, the district is asked to give at least 20% of our DDF toward Polio Plus. And we've done that well, I've been fooling with the foundation for a decade or so, and uh, we've done that for the last 10 years, and probably will continue to do that until we don't have public plus anymore. Uh, all right, so what happened to that other 5% of the money? Well, it goes to our overhead. We have a team of professional fundraisers out there. Uh, we have one in our area, uh, Carl Davis lives down in near Fayetteville at Fuquay Varina, gotta get a drink. Those guys are key when you're doing something like this million dollar dinner, or when you're uh, uh, trying to orchestrate a major donor. Say somebody wants to give $100,000, these guys can help them do that. That's beneficial to them and to, to Rotary. So these monies come back to us in three years. Okay, go ahead. Global grants, $30,000 or more, large project, must be international. You have to partner with an overseas host club. Um, needs, we don't define what they need. The community defines what they need. Um, and it has to be in one of those areas of focus that we talked about er earlier. And perhaps the hardest one, it's got to be measurable and sustainable, the outcome has. Sometimes that's difficult if you're doing economic development, um, maybe even a water project. Uh, you know, you say you're going to provide water to 3,000 people. Uh, how do you measure that? Uh, uh, well, you have to come up with a way to do those things. Uh, uh, sustainable. Uh, I've seen projects, and I'm sure everyone in the, on this call has seen these. You do, let's say, a well that's got a hand puff on it or something, and you walk away, and you come back three years later, and the hand pump's broken and nobody fixed it. That's not sustainable. We built bridges down in Nicaragua. Oh, God, uh, uh, 12, I believe it was, or 13, somewhere in there. Three of them. We went down there seven years ago to check on them, and they were falling apart because nobody had maintained them. And so, you know, it, this is important. The monies come from the club. <laughs> from DDF and from the World Fund. The World Fund matches our DDF at 80%. So if DDF is 50,000, they were providing to this, then 80% of 50,000, 40,000 from the World Fund. 
the timing. It's multi-year. We did one in Kenya, Bob Felt did in Kenya, and I think went on for 12 years. Uh, finally, is nearing completion. There's no deadline, although you do have to make periodic reports. Go to the next one. Three types of globals, you can see them. I'm not gonna dwell on them too much. Most of them are humanitarian. Uh, we do have some vocational training teams, uh, particularly in the medical area that we've done. Uh, don't remember any farmers, but we might've done some, but we've done several medical. And of course, scholarship programs, graduate level uh, within an area of focus. Go ahead. Okay, you want to do one, or you think you might want to do one. How do you find out where they are, what they are? Well, we used to do these friendship exchange trips. We still do them, but we got to pay for them ourselves. But when you go to a country, you make friends. You have connections with clubs. Even if you're visiting, uh, that's where the majority of the contacts come from, is talking to someone uh, when you're visiting there or they're visiting here. At the grant management seminar, we had uh, the, the young man from Guatemala. He garnered a lot of support just by talking to people at that grant management seminar. He'll get people, clubs, to help him in that project just by being there. You can partner with another club. The water project that we're thinking that we're going to do here in Guatemala has got at least three clubs involved already. And uh, I won't talk about those too much because I don't know whether they want people to know that or not. But they're going, to, they're going to do it with significant amounts of money. Project fairs. A lot of these can be done uh, virtually. I did one down in South, uh, Central America many years ago. Uh, so you go into this big auditorium, and there must have been 300 people from this district in there with a little booth and their projects, little brochures. And you go around to find something of interest to you. I think Jim uh, Eflin and myself brought back 30 or 40 uh, potentials. And we ended up doing one or two of those over the next several years. But that's another way. Um, you can do a web search and the Rotary Matching Grants website to see if something is interesting. When you go to the International Convention down in Houston or wherever the next one is after that, Go in the House of Friendship, you will find people much like in these project fairs hawking their projects. Go talk to those people. Our contact in the district next year is John Baumrocker, and he's done projects in Bolivia, uh, mostly in Bolivia, uh, for a long time. He knows the process and he can help. Uh, never be shy about asking people. All right. All right, this is John DeWitt's slide. <clears throat> so John, I'm hoping I get this right. District grant application deadline is 22 May. That's coming up here in a couple of weeks, not even a couple of weeks, uh, eight days. Um, and you know, you gotta get them in, get, get them in. They won't be approved right then because we have to read every one of them, but get them in. That's assuming you've got your goals in, but I'll talk about that in a minute. District grants, fund a variety of projects, as you can see there. And we've got 50 odd projects in the, uh, in the district and they're all a little bit different. They're really kind of, uh, there's very few rules. If you're doing some good in the, in the community and not just giving a check to somebody, if you're actually doing something and your Rotarians are participating, that's probably going to be approved. The district manages, manages these grants. Uh, but you have your responsibilities as well. Get your goals in through my rotary, as we've talked about before. I can't stress how important that is over a lot of areas, but particularly for this. At least one person from your club had to go to grant management seminar. We had a great turnout, and we had all but uh, three clubs, I believe it was, that uh, were not represented. Uh, you got to be up to date on all your uh, dues and such. To, to the district and to Rotary International. And you must have closed all your prior district grants. Uh, and if you're not going to be able to do them, call John and say, hey, I can't do this thing this year. Fine, we'll cancel it because uh, we'll roll the money over. But we don't want you sitting there with a bad grant at the end after they 
exploration and you can't apply for another one. We'll work with you is what I'm trying to say. You may apply for uh, more than one grant, but no grant or club can exceed $2,000. Uh, that's just so we have uh, some equity across the club, uh, across the clubs. This year, we're doing one competitive grant for $15,000 matching. Now, this is, uh, we wanted to do, I, I guess I should say it this clearly, I wanted to do uh, a big project or have the opportunity for people to do a big project in the district. You can do a $30,000 project with this, particularly if you team up with a couple of clubs. And there's opportunities for those kinds of projects in the club. We, I think we have three applications for this grant this year. We're only gonna be able to give one. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But if this is a success, then we might go for two next year. We'll see how it works. But there is interest in it, and that's important. Your grant must, your district grant must be complete by 1 May of next year, and the final report done by 15 May of that year. That gives us time to roll those monies over and uh, do our final report to Rotary International. Okay, next. Tell them what you told them. Key points. Final reports must have been submitted before 20 May to be considered. Any changes uh, to your grant must be improved before you implement that grant. Don't spend a dime until we get RI approval. And that'll be in July sometime, we think, for the 22, 23 uh, uh, grants. Uh, it's gotta be completed, but as, as I said, um, first of May next year, get your club goals in there. I must've said it five times. Get your club goals in there. Keep good records. Nancy uh, Brooks, God lover, has been doing this for years, uh, making sure that we got our uh, financial house in order, all your receipts of all your transactions, all your invoices, all your checks front and back. Uh, that's important. It's a fiduciary requir requirement for all of us. Okay. And Bill just asked, is there a good place to see what other clubs worldwide have done for good projects? Yeah, there's a, uh, uh, on my Rotary, there's a global grant uh, link on the website. The easiest way to find it is to Google it, Rotary International Global Grants. Yes, Tammy? Um, do they still do the Rotary Showcase? I haven't heard anybody talk about that in several years. Yeah, it's still on there. They changed the okay. name a little bit. Okay, is that there. what it is? It's still there. Okay. Uh, keep good records. Take pictures. They must be included in the final report. And it's just, it's not a picture of you giving a check to somebody. It's a picture of a Rotarian doing something. Um, we want to get some public relations benefit out of this as well. So, you know, you got you got Fat Gary out there in his great big rotary shirt, a Rotarian at work. Actually, I'm probably just watching, but I'll look like I'm working when you take the picture. That's what we're looking for, okay? And submit your final report within 20 days of completion. You don't have to wait till May to do it. Uh, when you've got the dead blame thing done, get the report in. Makes it easier on Nancy, makes it easier on all of us. Next slide. Scholars. We have a long history of doing uh, scholars, global grant scholars in the district and Peaceville. Pardon me. I'm not gonna read this thing to you, but the global grant scholars are funded by the clubs and the districts. Uh, you gotta have a bachelor's degree and an acceptance letter to the school. It's a year round process. I have one waiting to be approved uh, right now. I'm waiting on the people in Berlin to uh, do their approval, and then I will approve it, and we'll send it to the governor for his approval. Um, it, it, our decisions happen pretty quickly once we, uh, once we get it, uh, the right words, and the foundation is happy with it. Uh, got annual and final grant uh, process reports. Reports sometimes are painful to get done, because these young people sometimes don't always keep good records. So the club that's sponsoring really kind of needs to, you know, keep up with this. Uh, and uh, we've had good progress with that. We've done one reverse scholar that I know of. Uh, uh, what's a reverse scholar? 
That means you bring in somebody from outside the United States into the United States, into our district to go to school. We had a lady come from, I've um, uh, forgotten where she's from, Columbia, I believe. No, it was Belize. Uh, from Belize that went to Western Carolina and got her master's degree. Very worthwhile project. And she got a lot out of it, and we got a lot out of it. The Peace Fellows, uh, you can see they're funded totally by RI. We have no money in it. We do the applications. Um, I think we're working on one right now. It's very, very competitive. Uh, so if you've got a candidate, you let uh, Rick Mollard or, or uh, some of these guys on that team know, and they'll make it happen, or they'll help try to make it happen. Go to the next slide. I don't know what's coming up. Ah, well, there's lots of nuances to grants. Those are, that's just a thumbnail. We've got a whole bunch of people to help, and I've listed their names. Um, the new name on there that you may not be aware of is Trudy uh, Crawford, who's our Polio Plus person next year. Uh, John Baumrocker is our new International Services Chair for next year. And uh, we, uh, these guys are all knowledgeable in what they do. Uh, except that last guy, he just kind of fumbles around. But okay, next slide. Mark your cal calendars. Now, write this down, Jim Perry, if you're on here. Uh, Foundation Banquet. We're going to do this thing come hell or high water. We've canceled two uh, foundation events in the last uh, year and a half, and I'm not going to do it again. If we can get 50 people, we'll still do it. It's on the 19th of November. Uh, at 5.30, and it'll go to whenever. It's at the Morgan Community House, which has a shot of their one of their dining rooms. It's coat and tie, uh, cocktail dress kind of uh, uh, affair. Uh, we're not talking uh, tux or anything. Cost, we try always to keep this cost as low as possible. And I have not gotten the cost estimates yet because I just we just decided to do it in uh, November. And so, but it'll be reasonable, it usually is. We find, usually find funds to offset it. Um, and we'll also are going to recognize our million dollar uh, contributors, million dollar dinner contributors at this uh, event. Actually a separate part of it. And our speaker is one of our uh, foundation trustees, uh, Larry Lunsford, he's the incoming foundation chair for the Rotor, uh, for Rotary Foundation and uh, a good speaker and uh, charismatic. And uh, what are the reasons that we had the billion dollar dinner? So we're lucky to get him. Now, 19 November is not the exact date we wanted to do. That was the only day we could get Larry. So we decided that's what we would do is do it on the 19th. Okay, next. I guess that must be my summary slide. Let's see, Rotary, part of being a Rotarian is to support our charity. That is absolutely true. I can't uh, stress that enough. Use Rotary Direct to make it easy on yourself, but contribute. Almost half the money's come back that you contribute to the annual fund, comes back to us to support our global grants to the World Fund and, and to support district grants. The application on the district grants, as I've said about five times, is 22nd of May, be completed by the 1st of May. Polio, that 45 bucks that we hope you will give is important. It's still a challenge around the world. Even if one person gets it, that's too many. It needs your support. And the network we've established with the Polio Plus uh, process has been used to fight COVID, Ebola, many, many other things. That network is important as well. And it'll continue, I would imagine, even when we're through this. You have help if you want help. Your club foundation chair and president, they're there to help you. Your assistant governors, all of the district foundation committees, and of course, always the governors are, are willing to help, past and present. Contribute to the Rotary Foundation. It's our tool to do good in the world. Next slide. Doing good in the world, foundations are tool. Can you go to the next one? Can a global, uh, I got a question for, can a global grant address a problem in the district? 
Yes, it can, but you'll have to have a, um, a club from outside uh, the district, outside the United States to partner with you to do that. There's nothing wrong with doing a reverse global grant, uh, if that's what you're thinking. Questions, comments, snide remarks? I actually have a question, Gary. Um, well, I'm not going to answer, but go ahead. Please. Um, it's clarification on the date for applying for grants. I had it in my head that it was the 20th of May, and I'm hearing and seeing the 22nd of May, and I just need to make sure that people know because that's a difference. Twenty. Yeah, you're right. 20 May, you need to have those grants submitted. Thank you. To, to the district. By the and 20th. the goals, goals in Rotary Club Central, if their goals are not in Rotary Club Central on May 20th, they will not qualify for grant. Yeah, it should say 20, not 22. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. I'll correct that before we actually send that out Thank in you. case that gets confusing for anyone else. Yeah, I probably fat fingered it. Did two twos instead of the two O's. Two two. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. What else we got? I'm going to stop sharing so that we can see all of the people. And if you oh. want to and ask I did a it question. Within five minutes. And yep. I've, I've been putting people on mute as I saw you joining so that it didn't um, allow for other people. Um, so if you have a question, either raise your hand or start speaking. Cecilia, do you have a question? You have your hand up. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Sharon. Anybody with a question? Sharon, do you have your hand up? Sharon Parker. I'm not sure Jim why Perry. or how that happened. Jim Perry has a question. Okay, okay Jim. Jim. But I won't answer your question, but go ahead. All right. Well, I understand. Um, <laughs> but question about the reverse global grant. Yeah. So if we wanted to do a project, a global grant project within our own district, we can do a reverse global grant. But you said the partner district would require to be an international district. It yeah, could I'm, not I'm, be another district in the U.S. I think it has to be an international one, Jim. But I'll check on that. But I, I think it has to be an international. That's the whole point of the global aspect of it. Got it. Okay. Yes. Thanks. You bet. Best uh, conference chair ever. Jim Perry. Any other questions? Bill, you look so thoughtful up there. Ashley Biltmore. Well, my personal motto is slow but trainable. But thank you, Gary. <laughs> I'm slow but not trainable. Yeah. Anything else? I appreciate your interest. And if you do think of something later on, uh, send us a note, call us, whatever. Uh, if we don't know the answer, we'll find it. And I appreciate your time and work with your clubs and make annual fun grow. And I'll follow up with that and let everyone know that um, we will, we did record. I'm gonna stop recording right now. Um, after I finish talking and um, those will be made available. We'll send out a, a link in the next week, it'll be in the district newsletter. So um, if you know somebody who would benefit from seeing this, please make sure that uh, you share that it was a good and valuable thing to attend. And then uh, we'll also include the PowerPoint with that. And we'll also upload it to our uh, Rotary YouTube channel as well. Right.